Good evening. Our program will begin in just a moment. Please make yourselves comfortable. Hello and welcome to Thursdays at Home, Artist Talk with Joshing Arthur Liu. On behalf of the students, staff, and volunteers at the IU Eskenazi Museum of Art, thank you for joining us today. My name is Esmita Bosker and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a museum host and I'm a student studying business and interior design. We are so excited to present this program for you tonight. First, we wish to acknowledge and honor the indigenous communities native to this region and recognize that Indiana University Bloomington was built on indigenous homelands and resources. We recognize the Miami, Delaware, Potawatomi, and Shawnee people as past, present, and future caretakers of this land. Joshing Arthur Liu's artwork, House of the Singing Winds, is on view in the time-based media gallery of the IU Eskenazi Museum of Art. The time-based media gallery is made possible in part by support from the Office of the IU Provost and Executive Vice President, Patrick and Jane Martin, and the Michael J. Shubin Estate. This project was made in collaboration with the TC Steel State Historic Site and with generous support from the Platform Arts and Humanities Research Laboratory Office of the Vice Provost for Research, and Eskenazi School of Art, Architecture, and Design at Indiana University. Here are a few tips for optimizing your viewing experience with us tonight. There are several ways to adjust the size of images on the screen during this presentation. If you are connecting from a PC or a laptop, look for a button at the top of the screen that says View Options. Click on View Options and choose your preferred settings to customize your view. Also, the vertical bar between the presentation slides and the person speaking can slide left and right to make the presentation slides or the speaker appear bigger and smaller. For those of you who are connecting with a phone or an iPad, you may be able to enlarge images by pinching on the screen. For those who are curious to ask questions, we invite you to stay after the artist talk for a brief Q&A section. Questions can be asked by typing into this Q&A portion, which is located at the bottom and the two, on the Zoom toolbar. Typically, that's at the bottom of your screen. And this program that we have tonight is being recorded. Now, to introduce our guest, I'd like to welcome the museum's curator of contemporary art, Elliot Reichardt. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here virtually with all of you. Uh, thank you, Asmita. Uh, and it's really a pleasure to introduce uh, a friend and colleague, uh, someone I've got to know over the past year and more. Uh, Joshua Arthur Liu is an artist with a, his background is in photography, digital media, film, and journalism. Uh, he has a number of projects, including a pilgrimage to the Sacred Mountains in Tibet, a journey through the tsunami rage ravaged coastline of Japan, 
uh, and also, uh, as you might see later, a cinematic collaboration with the brain scientist regarding the connection between uh, endocannabinoids and memory. Uh, Arthur works with lens-based media and electronic imaging to create installations, trying mental and surreal spaces. Many of his videos do not contain, contain clear narratives as such, but are meditative in nature, uh, which I, again, I believe you'll see in the installation that is in the museum and, and through his work uh, outright. His sources range from landscapes and oil painting to the human body, and, and none of his, many of his works relate to the notions of impermanence, human tragedy, and spiritual sanctuary. Uh, a bit more on his bio, uh, Arthur and his works have been featured in exhibitions, collections, and programs at the Tokyo Museum of Photography, the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, the Rubin Museum in New York, the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, the Museum of Contemporary Photography in Chicago, near and dear to my heart, the Indianapolis Museum of Art, the National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne, the Seoul Museum of Art, the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts, Taipei's Fine Arts Museum, the Red Brick Museum in Beijing. Uh, he's also done work at Art Basel, Hong Kong, the Sharjah Biennial, and also at our very own Eskenazi Museum of Art, Indiana University, where we have a work of his in our collection uh, he is the recipient of the Asian Cultural Council grant in New York um, and also the Gary B. Fritz Award for the Society for Photographic Education Natural Conference in Chicago. Um, he's presented his work really all over the world um, in Europe um, and in a number of other places. And yeah, it's just it's a it's been a pleasure to work with with Arthur on this project. And uh, I'm very delighted to, to know that that's actually finally visible every day at our gallery in the Eskenazi Museum of Art. And without further ado, I, I'd like to welcome our, our man of the moment, Arthur Liu. Hello, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me. Um, as opposed to go through a long list of thanks, I just want to say um, thank you, Elit, first for the kind introduction and for coordinating all the logistics um, of this exhibition. Uh, everyone I mentioned in this talk deserve huge thanks. I can't really make this work without um, your inspiration and support. Um, at the risk of embarrassing myself, I would try a new format and start with a few anecdotes. I uh, hope you don't mind. I ran away from home when I was 17. In her desperate attempt to find me, my mother went to a psychic. And the psychic told her that my life could be symbolized as an island. So wherever I go, whichever direction I go, I'll return to the beginning. So um, rest assured, I returned home. And as the psychic predicted, my life, like this talk, is full of departures and returns. Um, the most fitting place to discuss um, the departure of about my creative path is with this picture. I'm going to start my, sharing my slide. Give me a moment. Oh, not this picture. This picture. Um, so as you can see, my fashion sense is really beyond my time um, with the, um, the Buzz Lightyear style laser gun and the star laden jacket. But that's not what I'm asking you to look at right now. Um, it, it's, uh, it's the man on the right, my grandfather. Uh, he was born in 1912, um, the year after the Qin Dynasty was uh, overthrown by the Nationalist, Nationalist Party Revolution. Um, he was a bridge between vastly different generations. Um, he received modern education, but was trained in Chinese literature and become an influential poet. Um, he was the first, one of the first person uh, in the region to uh, receive college degree at the prominent Fudan University in Shanghai. Um, he studied traditional poems like this um, with uh, really beautiful language. Um, an expression with very strict alignment on uh, the sound and uh, meaning. Uh, it was a difficult format, um, so 
he's well respected for, for his accomplishments. Um, the most prominent feature in, a, in my childhood was uh, shelves and shelves of books in the house and a steady stream of visitors asking for his advice on writing. Um, he certainly tried to nurture my writing. Um, I remember being bribed to remember poems with popsicle mine. And I can certainly have access to the mass collection of his books and I read my share of weird books in my childhood. And that seemed to have worked. Um, I was always at the top of my class when it comes to creative writing. My father, on the other hand, is a, was a military man. Um, he retired as a major, uh, became a high school teacher uh, on history and geography. Uh, he became a, a top administrator at the school. Um, because he was so serious and, um, and strict with the kids, we're never close to him. Uh, but nevertheless, he was an important role model for me in terms of discipline, integrity, and his leadership quality. My mother is the kindest person I know. Uh, her generosity is well known among friends and um, relatives. Her dedication to the children is what really um, holds the family together. With all the positive influence from my family, um, they didn't approve my artistic education. I remember when I was in third grade, I was discovered by um, my art teacher that my rendering of a tree root was really unique and interesting. And he, she offered to uh, get me a private tutoring. And I was like, wow, I can draw. Um, and I asked him for money and my mother said, you know, my parents said, we don't have money for that. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was not a money issue. Um, art was regarded as useless at the time. And not just them, the whole education system uh, was not supported in art. And, um, and art classes are often canceled just so we can study science or math or English. Um, so I have no choice but to write on something I am good at um, in writing. And uh, I didn't know how to use it quite yet uh, until middle school. Um, I saw a very uh, interesting television coverage about this really top uh, journalism program in Taiwan. And all of a sudden it clicked and I said, you know, I want to go to that school. And I remember their chuckle. And um, I don't know if they're entertained by my ambition or a practical career choice, or simply thought of it as a distant pipe dream because it was a really competitive program. So back in the idea of art though, my with, with art being outside of the picture of my youth, um, I've never been to contemporary art museums or gallery until I started working. And, uh, but the most important cultural exposure for me was film. And not just film, but cinema as a space. Um, a dark, dark place with the magic of light and movement with such intimate, comforting quality. My elementary school friend's family owns, um, owned a movie theater. And I enjoy hanging out there um, for free. And uh, remember the floor was sticky from chewing gum, spill soda, and snacks. Um, you can smell them and, and the humidity in the air. Uh, we wander around in the theater to the vendors for food um, or just for fun. We didn't always go there for the movie. Um, we just want to be there to feel the vibe, uh, feeling the echo, their echo everywhere. You can hear it from the ticket booth, restroom, or even on the street. My heart starts pumping with excitement whenever I get near. It was an interactive experience, and it left a deep imprint on my creative DNA. Um, fast forward to college. Um, here's the picture of the theater. Um, these are not the actual locations, but um, just the space holder so you can kind of um, play a little mind your imagination. Um, again, to the college. Um, I did end up in uh, the top journalism program in Taiwan. And, um, and I was uh, trained with an efficient style of writing that requires vivid and clear expression with a minimum number of words. And this is before the internet. Uh, newspaper has strict words assignment, and it's usually fewer than what you need to describe the full scope. Uh, it was challenging, but, you know, I continued to do well in writing, not by, by not studying too hard. Uh, I was elected 
editor-in-chief of a student newspaper. I even hosted a radio show on rock and roll music. Um, however, it seemed that war practice started to fade into the background. I didn't do anything major, except maybe uh, some highly effective love poems to my girlfriend and now my lovely wife. Uh, you can ask her whether I was good or just simply take my word for it. Um, I took, you know, what I really worked hard on is, uh, was my newfound passion in photography. Uh, I took two photojournalism classes trigger, that triggered my creative impetus in the visual realm. Um, spent 80% of my time on photography and 20% on everything else. Uh, unfortunately, there was not a photo track. I reluctantly chose radio and TV as my major. And then, wow, I was surprised by how intuitively I can pick up the skills and create really dynamic content, including an ex existent existentialist music video that features soundtrack from Pink Floyd, Dire Strait, and Sting. Was it my first video art project? Probably. Uh, it sure was different from everybody else doing. Um, in the picture, I was holding my graduate portfolio on the ancient three quarter inch tape, um, and I'm sure it's buried somewhere in my office. And after graduation, I um, uh, served two year mandatory military service um, and served as a lieutenant. And I was appointed by National Infantry School as head of television center, uh, producing training and promotion videos. Um, on the table, you can see actually a a, a beta tape now the technology data events um, and uh, and the project outline uh, the overall was a pre bleak two years in my life um, after that I worked at the news department in one of the three major television more make I mean network television company in, in Taiwan it was a prestigious job at the time um, you can see me carrying one of the first digital cam um, which cost US uh, $40,000 US money. And uh, it was in the early 90s was my year's salary uh, and more enough for down payment for a house. Uh, it was an exciting job for a while. I had privilege access everywhere. Um, I can go places not everyone can go. And the daily practice of fast editing, quick decision was really uh, fascinating. Although it was intimidating at the first uh, assume I can do it faster than anybody else. Uh, my sense of timing and pacing and rhythm was rather polished at that point. Um, but even with the fancy toys and well-paid dream job, I was not happy. Uh, for all the problems at the field at the time, making, I feel like I was making someone else's work. Uh, the job soon became a daily grind. So deep inside, I know I need my own voice. And after two years, I decided to come to the United States to study photography. I applied for a few schools, and IU Photographic Program was one of them. And um, so instead of coming to the Hoosier State, my application was denied. And instead, I went to Florida and studied after Jerry Usman, um, one of the most famous alum from IU Photographic Program. So there's a connection, but I you know, didn't come here. Um, you probably know by now that you know, I, I made it back as a tenure track professor. Um, after five years, um, but that's a different story. In, in graduate school, um, video, video I, I couldn't really imagine video uh, as, a, as an art form, and my previous um, job kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. So I, I run away as far as I can from video. And I returned to photography. And art was such a new idea, I embraced the formal quality. You know, I learned gum print, platinum print, Cyanotype, I do my own developer and toner. I couldn't draw a straight line, but at least I know how to make pretty pictures. And um, I started grad school with this kind of pictorial style using plastic camera, um, just exploring the secrets in the South. Um, eventually, again, I reluctantly started working with digital media, and I was hooked. Um, it was Similarly intuitive to the process of learning video, gadgets and computers are, that are challenging for the others are kind of easy for me. So by the time I graduate, become my main focus. I made some video um, that was raw and interesting. It wasn't until my daughter was born in 2002, I started to work seriously with video. 
Um, and at the time, there's no turning back. Pandora's box was open. I realized with photography, I, I seem to always repeating some, somebody else's work. And in video, I have the potential of creating something very few had experienced before. And I'm going to go through some of these examples. Again, you can see that you know we have big screen um, in dark place. Uh, so deep inside, maybe trying to replicate that experience of um, the, the movie theater, but you know with the interactive um, nature. Um, and here, this is Nachi and one of my uh, true multi-channel pieces that was about the um, sacred waterfall in um, Japan. Um, and this is uh, the Insatiable. Uh, uh, the museum, Eskenazi Museum actually has a collection of this piece. Uh, it was based on the uh, night market that was transformed into a, a dragon in the sky. Um, Cora, uh, one of my most well-traveled pieces, um, was filmed on first 4K um, camera. Um, uh, red wine, uh, red wine, and um, and uh, the, the piece is projected by a combination of six projectors stitched into one image in, in a very bright environment. So the resolution became um, more and more important to me, and um, and I could actually describe um, what I'm gaining by resolution and skill, at least in my own theory. Um, and it helps me transform light into object from photographic impression to painterly surface. Um, you know, in the early days when the video is uh, low resolution, um, uh, you, you, know, you get close to the screen, it starts to dissolve. It becomes really blurry and it was deflating experience. Um, I believe that with higher resolution, you know, it was kind of fulfilling my painters at Envy. You know, I kind of want the, 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 the piece to have this kind of physical quality. And it also helps me to establish a sense of illusion that a mediated experience is not mediated, but a direct encounter. It's a perception I like to define here as presence, and especially presence as immersion. Viewers are involved, absorbed, engaged, and engrossed, and ultimately, viewers participate. Um, and uh, this is another piece uh, that kind of relies on this, these ideas, the Sonnet 27 of the first human cannabis piece uh, project. And uh, I was shooting with another uh, red camera with a vertical res a horizontal resolution at 5,000 pixels that I can spread it to four screens. And, uh, and you can see, I mean, the conceptual and at least the formal connection between this piece and the piece I'm going to talk about today. So, um, okay, so uh, the, the next I kind of want to talk about a, a recent development in my work, which is about text. Um, so I spent a lot of time talking about my writing influence, um, and I, I just couldn't think of good ways of using them in my work. Um, I always thought of, in most of my careers, I was trying to make work beyond, with emotions beyond uh, descriptions. Um, but I didn't realize until recently is that um, good writing could also carry that experience and emotions beyond words. Um, a, a first uh, experiment with that was this uh, pilgrimage project uh, when I walk a co I mean, um, across the coastline that was hit by tsunami in Japan in 2013. Um, I didn't have a, a lot of time to write every day, but but I blogged, and uh, and that becomes an essential part of the work. I'm going to write or read you a few passages um, of that of that experience. Um, I saw a group of kids playing in the graveyard in the afternoon. It was a striking image. They were dressed in bright colors, pink, red, and uncanny contrast against a black and gray headstone, or between life and death. They giggled when I told them I was from the US. I asked them to film like it was a game. They were excited. We walked about with the camera, and they take turns. A grandpa came out with a stern face. 
I, to, I told him about uh, my work. I didn't know what to make of it, but eventually softened up after reading my project. This graveyard was operated by a Buddhist temple, a common practice in Japan. It is a family business. At least two of the kids are grandchildren of the man. The graveyard is their back playground. Um, here's another one. Um, I close my palms in front of my forehead. This is at, this is at uh, during uh, March 11, the third an anniversary of the earthquake. Um, and I was at a, uh, the crisis management center, which was stripped to its bones. And it became a really popular site for journalists actually to come photograph. Um, so I closed my palms in front of my forehead at the altar. Tears came to my eyes. I was not all uh, it was not all sadness. I gained a sense of peacefulness when I pray for the others. By sharing our grief, the burden of each individual is lessened. The whole trip has been like a group therapy. So um, it was um, a nice warm up to my next project, and um, which is a film, the second hum human cannabis piece um, about about the, our connection with the plant in the image of Japanese culture. And uh, you know, I try to um, work on another wordplay here, so. Uh, the film is filmed in the Japanese language, um, but I have to compose the writing, the script. Uh, it was written in English, uh, but oftentimes I have to write in Chinese in tandem uh, because I just have to use Chinese to kind of squeeze out that creative juice. And uh, it was translated beautifully back to Japanese by a friend, Michiko uh, Flood. Um, and uh, here's a uh, one minute uh, excerpt. Uh, the image could be choppy on your end, but not to worry. You just have to focus on the subtitle. As long as you can hear it and see the subtitle, you're fine. Okay, so um, I'm sorry about if there's a sound issue, um, and I'm not sure if this part should be muted or not. Um, but either way, I hope that worked. You can see the text. Uh, that's the most important. Um, you advance to another slide. Okay, so now we're ready to talk about um, the TC Steel project. Um, so I'm. I have to confess that I'm not a TCCO expert. You know, if you want to hear the history um, of uh, the TC Steel uh, and uh, his wife, uh, Selma Steel, uh, please, please go to the TC Steel historic site. They make the best uh, tours, very entertaining, um, thrilling tour uh, and, and wonderful stories. Um, there are also a lot of TC Steel experts in the audience and I'm sure they could provide better Clues, but I do want to mention that this is—he's uh, probably one of the most important um, artists um, in the state's history, and uh, their house in Brown County, uh, House of the Same Winds, has been a, a very important cultural site uh, of the state, and um, they uh, um, they were married in 1907. Um, and uh, 
TC Steele decided to come to Brown County um, and, and, and he really enjoyed, uh, appreciated the landscape here. Uh, Brown County was pretty much wilderness back then. Uh, so it was really challenging for them to move here, but nevertheless, they settled. Um, and I didn't come to, uh, I, I lived in Indiana since 1999, but I didn't really, haven't really been there until um, 2009 when um, there was a public art commission for, um, at the Wisher Hospital that was applying um, with, uh, that was coordinated by Mark Rushman, uh, now the chief curator at uh, Indiana, Indiana State Museum. Um, so Mark and I worked really hard on um, uh, sort of this proposal and uh, we'd naturally have to look at what the hospital, um, you know, the, the, the selection or the, con uh, the collection, the art collection at the hospital. And they cannot stop talking about TC Steel's Four Seasons. Um, so I made a proposal around these uh, paintings and I came to the site and I was really fascinated by the house. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, I, I um, the long story short, um, I, you know, we, we, we pitched, uh, I think a great idea. Um, and, and Mark and I were very hopeful. It was well regarded, but, um, but it was rejected. Uh, on hindsight, um, I think it might be a good thing because I think after 10 years, more experience, um, I, I like to think that my um, my treatment uh, is a little bit more mature. Um, I didn't get to think about it though until the summer of 2018 um, when David Brenneman, director of Eskenazi Museum, invited me to um, talk about this idea of the time-based media room. And I use this picture um, because it was, you know, the museum was a construction site back, back then and everything um, about the building was uh, was just an idea, um, but nevertheless we were excited. Um, and uh, this this room uh, has a feature of three walls um, that are angled in a panoramic format, and very fittingly for a museum that everything is triangle. Uh, and we talked about um, sort of uh, implementing state of the arts pro projection with high resolution that no one has seen before. I certainly haven't, you know, seen any project like that, and I hate to uh, go to the idea of the, you know, using work, uh, old work for this space. So, um, so after, you know, some consideration, I, I know I need to find a place. Oh, by the way, this is this is uh, the room on the third floor. Uh, the picture was taken just a few days after the museum opening, um, and this is a time-based media room. Um, before it's uh, fully featured. Uh, I, need, I know I need to go somewhere that's close. Uh, this is a new format. I need to, I want to put my hands on it every day. And I, the, the, the TC Steel Historic Site is just 20 minutes away from campus. I live on the east side, so right around here. So it's only literally 15 minutes away from my house. Uh, I, and I sure did uh, spend a lot of time there. Um, I started in October um, 2018, and I went there and I met Kate Wetzel, um, the program developer um, um, at the TC Steel Historic Site, and um, and I was li literally uh, welcomed with open arms. Uh, was made feel to feel at home immediately, and Kate said, "You know, you are the artist resident in residence of October." And, uh, and I ended up working there on and off for a year. Um, so there are a number of things in my, you know, throughout the work that I, I'm negotiating uh, and considering, um, they are, uh, some of them are really um, sort of just a wonderful resource, some are challenging. Um, the, the first thought is, is about Brown County landscape, this kind of magical landscape that the TC still, um, TC and Selma fell in love. And I developed a habit, habit of hiking uh, when I was preparing for my pilgrimage work. Um, and I just thought, you know, I just really enjoy being out in the element and, uh, and you know, taking the air. Um, so it was magical to me as well. Uh, and I've been here 20 years. I think it's really overdue that I start working 
on subject matter that's close to me. Um, the house itself is a lived experience. Uh, it's a literal time capsule. It's full of texture and rich color um, and visual interest. It's a cinematographer or photographer's dream. And the smell of the old furniture and books um, really bring about the presence of TC and Selma Steel um, and was rather palpable. And I did have uh, uh, an early struggle about the decision whether uh, to paint or not to paint. You know, how should I treat my video? Should it be photographic or should it be animated? Um, you know, I, I just, it, it, it was difficult, you know, and, and I come to a natural resolution when the images were um, started to be produced. Um, but, um, but in terms of, you know, even a color scheme, it was, uh, it was a challenging idea. And the, the story, the history um, of TC and Selma Steel is, um, is really exciting, actually. You know, you're talking about romance, adventure, dedication to art, um, and really, it was really a love story. Um, it was so challenging to move here from, uh, to Brown County in 1907. And, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting to think about um, their experience. Um, last but not least, I, I feel like I, by working on this project, I was able to make full circle. Um, like the many returns I was talking about, you know, I'm, the project was um, inspired by paintings in, at the Eskenazi Hospital. And I'm a faculty at the Eskenazi School of Art, Architecture and Design uh, with work featuring at the Eskenazi Museum. Um, it's worth noting that Selma did not want to leave um, the property to her children. And she's been envisioning the space as uh, a cultural institution from very early on. And um, at one point, she was almost ready to donate the property to IU. Negotiation uh, happened in 1939 and 1934 when Herman Wells was uh, the president. But because of the IU bureaucracy, um, it didn't happen. You know, uh, they, they told her that the IU did not have the money when at the same time they um, committed to uh, several building projects. And eventually the property was donated to uh, Indiana Department of Conservation in 1945. And um, as if all, um, as if being released from a huge responsibility or fulfilled a lifelong promise, uh, Selma passed away in less than two months. Now, the historic site is now um, part of the in Indiana State Museum and Historic Site System was really well managed and um, the new visitor center is just wonderful. I really encourage you to visit. And it's probably for the best that it's managed this way, but I can't help wondering what could have been. So I think privately I charged myself uh, as an ambassador from IU, as a Herman Wells professor to invite Selma back. Um, IU has many TC Steel paintings in its collection but I'm bringing the whole house, uh, metaphorically. Um, so just to talk a little bit about my process, um, and uh, because I need to film three walls with this uh, 4K camera, um, and at the beginning, I just have to kind of start, at the, start with the hard way. Um, I take a picture at the center, and I move the picture left, uh, camera left, take uh, another, take a sequence and move it to the right and take another sequence. Uh, it was rather clunky and uh, my movement, actually there's no, no, no movement to talk about, but my position is really limited. Um, so I was progressing very slowly on my own and I didn't even tell, you know, David about this idea yet. Uh, no one was, no, no one knew what I was, you know, sort of, I was working on this project. I just felt like really alone. And, um, and uh, you know, I know I have time. The museum was under construction, but, you know, it, it's uh, getting a little bit, um, things are getting a little bit sort of, uh, you know, stuck at the time. And, um, and then came an announcement of this 
wonderful platform program on Indiana studies. Uh, I was like, wow, what a great timing. You know, all the years I didn't work on Indiana taught subject matter and uh, now I get to apply to this grant. Uh, I was really hopeful and did apply um, and really excited, but the project was rejected. Um, so, you know, I, I know I, I have no choice but to plow ahead, but fortunately, uh, thanks to uh, Ed Kamantali, the Vice Provost, uh, Associate Vice Provost for uh, the Arts and Humanities at IU. He encouraged me to apply for a public art grant and I got a course release, which made a big difference uh, in sort of finalizing the project. Um, and he even um, took another step and invited me back to the Indiana study program at the platform and, and this time as a faculty director. So, um, so what, what seems to be the challenge turned out to be, you know, a, a very positive result. And, uh, and I encourage you to go to platform.indiana.edu to look at all the wonderful uh, projects uh, of our members. And uh, so with that, I think we're ready to see um, the, the result um, of the video and uh, taking a peek at the uh, part one of the TC Steel project. So, um, um, it's a little tricky. I'm going to actually send you out of Zoom, you know, to stay in Zoom. Uh, you can still hear me, but you need to click on the link um, that is provided by, so I can stop sharing now. Uh, if you can open the chat window, uh, Open the chat window. You can access chat by go to the bottom of the page of, of the Zoom page, and click on the the link. And don't start it yet. Okay, don't start it yet. And um, so um, the video is about three minute long. Okay, I will uh, please ask you to run it when I uh, after my count. Um, and feel free to turn it on full screen if you can. If not, don't worry about it. Um, and uh, at the end of the program, please close the window and then come back to Zoom. So it's about three minutes long. And I'm going to count three, two, one, enjoy.
Okay, as you're wrapping up, welcome back to Zoom. Um, okay, um, if, if you have problem access the link, I just want to remind you that the Zoom link is in the chat window. Uh, feel free to click on it to view it again. Uh, you should be able to still hear me. Um, um, but but I will continue to uh, on my presentation now. I'm going to share screen again. Okay, so you're looking at the page, the Vimeo page of the video right now. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to see it yet. Okay, back on the slides. All right, so um, you're, I mean, remember the, the, the technical issue I was talking about um, that I have to shoot three times, um, that I can't move. And uh, it was okay when I was outdoor, when there were wind blowing, the leaves moving, there was movement that tells you this is video. Uh, but when I, when I go into the house, there's no such luxury. So I have to figure out something else. Uh, fortunately, last summer, uh, a new camera came out with a horizontal resolution of um, 10,000. So I can do the same thing again. I can just take still photos, uh, many, many still photos in the stop motion animation format. Um, like here, you can see my setup. Um, I have a, a motorized slider that moves the, the camera and uh, with many of them in a sequence, it becomes a video. And uh, the screen may be looking very ginormous right now, but it's actually only seven inches, but I have to tape the top and the bottom to kind of roughly see what I'm filming and what the final result would be. Um, so a lot of the sequence you see actually is stop motion animation. And um, the process is with, uh, when I take a, um, a full picture, uh, the first thing I have to do is to kind of adjust its uh, highlight and contrast and kind of recover all the information uh, from the raw file. And then I would color grade it um, and, and give it a more cinematic look. And I have to crop it because uh, the work is in a panoramic format. Um, only a small portion would be viewed uh, just like this on the three screen you saw earlier. And, uh, and I could then distribute the, um, the image to the left uh, and part of it to the right and part of it at the center. And as you can see that, although it's cropped, it's uh, still relatively sharp. And uh, so each screen um, at the on the installation is only 10% of the single frame resolution. Um, it takes 300 shots um, to give me 10 seconds of raw footage. And on a good day, I can get uh, maybe 15 shots. Given the mistake, I will grab about 5,000 files each day, uh, which is a lot to transfer and to process. Um, and that amount of resolution needs uh, a good projectors to kind of uh, reveal, kind of fully fulfill its potential. And this is uh, summer last year when the Epson rep uh, was showcasing the world's uh, one of the two um, prototype of this new projector um, that is 4K and super bright. And, um, and I just have to uh, acknowledge uh, the museum's effort for really going out its way to, um, to acquire these equipments, to make the investment, and uh, to sort of grow a new arm uh, out of nowhere um, that, that could become uh, an important feature of the museum in the future. So um, I, I really appreciate that and really honored to be in the process. And um, so by November 2019, I have produced um, half the footage um, with the music you just heard. And it was only half done at the time. Uh, I was presenting this at the platform symposium. Um, um, it was well received. And I was, you know, everybody was like, seemed happy about the direction. Uh, but I know it's only half done. And uh, what I really need is um, 
Selma's voice. And um, I was really inspired by this book, The House of Singing Winds, and it featured uh, Rachel uh, Perry's introduction about uh, Selma Still and Selma Still's own writing about um, their experience of coming to Brown County and develop the, the property. And, uh, and indeed, like Rachel's, uh, the title, uh, introduction title, uh, Selma was a woman ahead of her time. Um, she was trained as a designer in New York and uh, was had a career in, in teaching um, before marriage. Um, the Brown County was really a barren landscape, um, well, by barren means that there's not a whole lot of infrastructure development. Uh, and farmers are really poor and, um, and, and, and farm in really primitive methods. And Selma tried to research and educate them, but only to be ridiculed. Uh, she lobbied for improvement of infrastructure like roads, which we take for granted today. Um, and she usually uh, get results when people are tired of getting letters from her. Um, although people, you know, TC get all the, um, um, you know, sort of acknowledgments, the house is largely a sellers project. There's so many building and landscaping to be done. Um, but she couldn't even give order to man. You know, uh, TC is out there painting, um, and she's the one who could communicate, but the man wouldn't listen to her. Uh, so she has to tell TC what to tell the, I mean, the worker what to do. Um, and not to mention, she's constantly under financial burden for maintaining and running the facility. So I have a lot of respect and admiration for her, and I want her perspective in this work. And uh, and all the sort of, you know, the uh, notion of love and their connection to nature in Brown County and the house. So um, I have to, um, so in order to do that, I have to, I want to, I need to write <laughs> again, but this time um, with, with the format of, of adaptation. I mean, Selma still writes beautifully in a very poetic format. So it's not hard for me to find materials, but I still have to kind of piece them together in a meaningful way. And, uh, and I even, I mean, I just try to make sure that it, it, the, the rhythm and the pacing, just like editing um, and even rhyming is, is right. So, um, and uh, so, so I, I researched for quite a while and I hone in um, during the winter um, last year and uh, developed the script and I need a voice. So I was so fortunate to have um, Yao Cassander um, agreeing to uh, work on this project. And uh, many of you remember Yao's voice uh, during her um, uh, time at, at WFIU. Um, and uh, I think she's making a, she's made just a wonderful interpretation of the project. Um, uh, that's an image of her uh, in the studio. Uh, we had a lot of fun uh, recording and thinking about uh, sort of, you know, the, the right tone for this piece. And uh, here I'm gonna share with you another, um, another section of the film. So I'm gonna stop sharing here. And again, um, Laura, please paste the link. So the link is in the chat. Uh, please click on it. Don't start yet. You know the drill. I'll give you a few seconds to set up. Um, and on my cue, please uh, click play. So, and, and then turn full screen if possible. So three, two, one, enjoy. I believe.
Okay, welcome back. So, um, let me share this. Okay, so I, I won't, let me see, make sure I'm not muted. So I won't add more to the project. You really have to come to the museum to see it. Um, the on-site experience simply cannot be translated. Um, it's been a great pleasure having this opportunity to share my work. And um, I can certainly answer uh, questions after this. Thank you so much for coming. Please join me in thanking Joshing Arthur Liu for a wonderful talk. For those of you who are curious to ask questions, we invite you to stay afterwards for a question and answer portion. Before we begin with the questions, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. We're curious to hear how your experiences were with us tonight. We appreciate your feedback to help make better experiences. You can tell us in a very easy survey as you exit this webinar. Now we will begin with the question and answer portion. Thank you, Arthur. And I will, I mean, I'll just kind of go off this situation. Um, one of the things that really, I mean, we have a lot to talk about, um, but one of the things that really struck me with your presentation and with the work was the relationship between the painting practice, the landscape practice of TC Steel and your work as a video artist. And again, and you may disagree with that, but that characterization, but I was really, really compelled by the fact that, that um, you were able to sort of translate his work into this crazy new medium, which is like wrap around again, like you need to see it to believe it. And I entreat you all to go see the piece because it's quite spectacular and um, really just sort of beyond informative, it's actually really overwhelming in a, in a really lovely way. But I was, I was really struck by how you were able to isolate T.C. Seal's work as a landscape artist and incorporate it into your work as a video artist. I'm, I'm just interested in that translation, you know, as someone who, who, you know, has this very digital practice and you're working with the materials of an artist who's quite analog. And so if there's anything you could say that, I'd be, I'd be happy. If not, obviously fine. Yeah. Well, well, this is, and thank you, Elliot, uh, for that, for that observation. I uh, kind of mentioned there was a struggle when I tried to translate his work you know do I paint or do I not paint how do I make my video look like painting and that would be really cheesy if I did that so I kind of gave up on that uh, long ago the work is more about the house um, and them as people um, their relationship their personal quality um, and the landscape around it so with that you know I'm, I'm free to explore the medium um, the way, you know, I always operate. Um, but still, you know, with, with some influence of his painting style, for sure. Um, but but he, his painting and his environment definitely provide a rich uh, resource for my project. Yeah. I'm just, I guess, and that's something that I'm very interested in is like, you're working in this very high tech medium that again, and you and I know this better than most folks, it's like quite technically complicated and uh, not easy. And it's not just like a matter of like projecting an image on a wall, like, but you're materially, you're dealing with an artist who is really like just a painter, you know, and I'm just, and again, I'll press you on this again, and, and you can just, you can tell me that I'm crazy or just not, like, you seem to be really emotionally 
indebted to the folks or the, the subjects of your work. And I'm, so I'm just curious, what about TC Steel were you able to kind of connect to? You know, I, I, as someone who's also been asked to connect to things that I'm just like really a novice in, like, I feel like you really gravitated to that piece. And I think your the way that you've quoted Selma is really profound and um and not it, it's just very it's it's extremely effective and i'm just curious about your process and the research of that yeah i think first and foremost um the it, it, it was uh uh I, I really admire um pc field work uh, not just his work but his lifelong dedication to his work uh painting was his, li his life you know, you know, we 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 have I've I've seen I myself I, you know we consider ourselves sort of dedicated artists, um, but but still you know that level of commitment was just something really inspired inspiring for me to watch, um, and uh, and oftentimes when I look at his painting you know either in the studio or at the house, I have these like private uh, moments of being around the work for a long time. Um, and uh, it was just so enjoyable to be around. Um, and I have worked with painters before. A um, long time ago, I, I collaborated with Barry Gilt um, um, on a, a series of animations. Um, so it was not a strange idea for me to you know, seek inspiration from painting. Um, but this is still a very unique experience and I, I'm grateful to have that privilege. Thank you, Arthur. I think um, I'm I'm trying to monitor a number of Q and A's, and I think uh, we've got a question from Judy Somerville that is probably helpful for me as well. Which is generally like, how do you conceptualize a piece? You know, like between I and again, I know this is an unfair question to an artist, <laughs> but from a curator and artist, like between conceptualizing you know, grabbing your imagery and then also editing as you do because you are, uh, you know, you're a video artist. Um, how does that process work for you? Like in, in, are there, are there questions? Are there situations where you, you know, you have to say like, oh, I need to go back to the field or I need to go do this or, uh, so I'm, yeah, a, a general question about your process, like in terms of capturing information and then and then making it and shaping it. Yeah, I, I think it's a, uh, it's really in the very early stage. It, it's really important to find something I care deeply about, and, and that's hopefully that's something that people people could care deeply about. You know, that I can find an angle. So it's not just my private um, passion uh, or, you know, it's just my, not my private thoughts. But I have to do a lot of research uh, and usually I can find something that is significant. Um, if, if the project was significant enough to, to start with, uh, I, I don't really run out of sort of backstories and, and they will certainly inform the way I think and the way I operate. Um, and then uh, technically, I just really want to push myself to be on the cut, cutting edge because uh, we still have a lot of grounds to cover and this medium could only look better. Um, you know, it, it may sound like wasteful practice, but still, I think it's, it's very exciting uh, for me to uh, be in this line of work um, that I continue to push the boundary of um, the visual art. Um, there's still plenty of work to do, um, but but I make sure you know that I, I train myself. I acquire the equipment I need. I write grants and, and secure every possible support to uh, um, to to fund the project. So uh, so it's a you know combination of business and creative uh, activity. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's usually how I started. But but the idea, I think, of, it, it has to be something I care very much.
Yeah, I mean, I think that's evident in the nature of your work is that you come from a place of conviction and honesty and 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 really exactly like conviction. Like you, I don't think any of the pieces that you've shown me are, you know, they're not hypothetical. They're about personal experiences and uh, personal relationships to an idea. And I mean, and I, there are a number of uh, questions here that I should probably uh, filter, but I'm just generally speaking, colleague to colleague, like, what does, what does the work do for you? You know, like, is, is it a, is it a therapeutic thing? Is it a cathartic thing? Is it, I mean, I, I, cause it's different for everyone, but I know you put your heart and your soul into your work. I'm very clear on that. And I just, I, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. I just, I'm curious, like, you know, when you make a piece, you clearly put your all into it. And, um, you know, how do you feel about that? I don't know. That's, that's a really kind of a crappy question, but it, it, so, I mean it well. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. It, it is, it is a form of therapy. It, it's a, it's a meditative experience, you know, whether I'm spending all day editing or spending all day, um, you know, waking up four, four in the morning to go to the uh, the site in the dark, um, you know, catching the first ray of sunlight. You know, it's it's a lot of times it's it's one it's enjoyable. I'm I'm just like feel like I'm privileged to do this, you know, as a profession. Um, and the number two, uh, a lot of time has to do with, with my sort of personal um, processing of my my own tra you know, my family tragedy. So. So yeah, there is a therapeutic component that I get to, to uh, work through in my work. Um, and I'm afraid of uh, dealing with those issues by myself. And, and work becomes a venue, becomes a place that I can share with public and actually talk about it. So yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's helpful that way. Yeah. And I appreciate that, because I know it's not, it's not a obvious or easy question. Um, but it, it, I think it's important to me as a peer to relate to your work. Um, so I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm trying to filter them. Uh, I think, I think the general vibe is, um, you know, in what sense do you relate to TC Steel or not? And, and I, I think you've, and I'll preface that by saying, like, you've developed this incredible homage to TC Steel. So I think I think the proof is on the paper in terms of like you've made this piece that's really uh as someone who's actually, and I admit this, I've never been to the TC Steel historical site. I passed by it. I'm a new Indiana and I'm a new Hoosier. So I I actually just not on my itinerary. You know it will be soon so i'm i'm just curious like um you made this piece and i know it, it it's it's circumstantial it's right it's like it's this historical site near you and you've done this incredible amount of research and i think you've really elevated sama's voice in a way that is profound and so important. And if you have any sort of reflections on that in terms of your your time researching and spending time in that site or researching Summa's work, like what do you have to offer? <laughs> okay, so I, I think I touched on um, those ideas. Um, You know, if, if there's anything else to add, I, I just want to point to uh, the experience of being in the house is just uh, is just really incredible. Um, you really have to be there to feel it. And I also was privileged to, you know, they 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 <laughs> they're so comfortable with me sort of being alone in the house. I could spend all day there uh, by myself. And I, you know, I actually became a feature of their tour. Um, <laughs> 
and you know they would uh, the tour would, would start at the you know be, be, at the, the one side of the house they would walk through me and they would just say you know this is the fireplace this is the piano oh this is a visiting artist from Indiana <laughs> University I would just like wave at them so welcome welcome and that made me feel like you know part of the program and uh, helpful in a way and, and I always encourage them to come to the museum the Skenazi Museum to see the work when it's done and and finally yeah. we're now. Yeah, it's 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 funny. Like I I again, I'm a new Hoosier. I'm I'm actually a very proud Hoosier, uh, but I I have not, and I've driven by the TC Steel site, and I have not been yet. I admit that. Um, but having spent time working with you and and working with the piece and working with the gallery, uh. I have a kind of reverence for that space that I just don't really know how to describe. And, um, and so just knowing that you have captured it in a way that I think, and I've, I've taken people through the space, I've, I've shared it with people and it also it's, it's up now, it's up every day. Um, you know, not even when just the galleries are open, but actually when physically when the museum is open. So any of the hours the cafe is open, Arthur's piece is open for you to watch. And um, it's really profound. And I think you, I think you'd learn a lot about not just Indiana, but about this, this person, about this relationship. And it's, it's quite profound. And I think I will say like your work on the the optics of it, like the space is amazing. It's quite great. And then also the work you did in sort of researching and putting together uh, a dialogue and a script for Selma really, you know, it's one thing to have great images and then it's another thing to have great text and you just kind of put it together. And uh, I think it's a rare opportunity. So I encourage you all to see it. Uh, it'll be up for quite some time, thankfully. And um, that's all I have to say about Arthur's work. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan and I spend a lot of time looking at it. And, Ilya, can, uh, I, can I answer some of the questions really quickly? Yeah, please so, do, so, Arthur. I'm, um, not, I'm not a, yeah, yeah so, I'm not so a great. John, John Vicker said, you know, using only 10% of the frame, is that counterintuitive as a photographer? When thinking about composition, yes, it was. It was so <laughs> weird, and the fail rate was very high. Um, but I, you know, I got used to it, um, and it it is what it is. And I think uh, the end result was okay. Uh, Martha asked about uh, use the written or and spoken language. Do I have to anticipate using this technique in the future? I don't know. Um, and you know. I, I enjoy the, the writing prog process, but it's, uh, it's, you know, it's still kind of not normal for me right now to do that. I, I know I talked about my writing training, but, um, um, but I think it, it needs a fitting project. But, you know, since, since, since I've done like three projects with text now, I, I figure it could be uh, in the pipeline some, somewhere in the future. Um, is there a similar moral political impulse behind your my fascination with the steels? No, there is none. <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of moral, I think it's uh, it's it's the the, the really uh, genuine human quality um, that I want to convey in this uh, in this project. It was based on the admiration that I do this project. So, you know, if you consider that a moral um, impetus, that's a uh, or impulse, um, then then that is that. There is no political agenda. Um, let me see. Uh, there's project. Let me see if there's another one related to TC Steel, and that would probably should wrap it up. I welcome all of your input. I yeah, I'm I'm good to go, but you know. I think there are some folks who probably have like specific questions. Oh, there is a, a question about music. So the the music uh, you you heard was uh, performed by performed composed by an Italian com uh, pianist, um, and 
you know, I try, I thought about working with, uh, collaborating with the uh, composer at IU, which I've done before. Um, but for this project, um, that one just kept me captivated for, for so long and I couldn't escape that um, sound quality. Um, so we decided to acquire the license to, uh, for this piece. And, um, and I, you know, to this day, I still believe it's the, the best choice. Yeah, it's a beautiful composition, and um, again, I I know we've we've worked on oh we've talked about your previous compositional efforts, and um, yeah, I think it's quite appropriate. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, so um, feel free to send me an email. You can find me at the uh, Skenazi School website. You know, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to. Uh, um, have a discussion with you. So uh, if not, I, you know, I, I'm sorry I can't answer all the questions on uh, in the Q and A right now. Um, I think you know, with respect of time, we should let Elliot rest. Um, so uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Arthur, and yeah, thank you all, Laura, Azimata. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed this program. This program and everything at the Eskenazi Museum of Art is made possible by philanthropy. So if you've enjoyed tonight's program, please visit our website and make a donation just like those before you have. Even gifts of $5 can make all the difference. Thank you so much. And from all of us at the Eskenazi Museum of Art, take care and have a good evening.